Now then, how do? Welcome to a bit more Yorkshire Brass with me, David Hoyle. Once again, another two hours of fabulous brass band music to come. Thank you so much for your request this week. Lovely to hear from all of those who've been in touch, and we'll get through as many of them as we can. What we can't fit in this week, well, that'll move on to another show. We started with 633 Squadron by Ron Goodwin. Um, I was playing that because recently I've been going through my CD collection, well I've had nothing better to do, and I've been updating my database and I found this wonderful CD by the Wingates Band with a number of recordings on it. We're going to hear two of them today uh, and that was the first and I just thought it was a great way to start the programme. Our Clarice's favourite piece of music. The first March request of the day goes to Richard in Rippenden. Thank you Richard for getting in touch and a foot tapper of a March Oily please if I may. Thank you for bringing the show to us says Richard. It is absolutely my pleasure and the March you've chosen well it's one of my favourites. The Grimethorpe Colliery Band playing the music of Robert Brownhall, the new colonial. <laughs>
Colonial March by Robert Brownhall was played by the Grimethorpe Colliery Band at the request of Richard in Rippenden. Thanks again, Richard, for that one. Overture time now, and we're going to Knaresborough for this one. Regular listener, Brian, he's been in touch and asked for an overture that he hasn't heard for some time. Well, this one, uh, again, uh, to be honest, it wasn't on the database until very recently, so I'm delighted to be able to bring this one to you as well, Brian. This was first performed back in February of 1823 at Teatro La Fenice in Venice. It's the music of Rossini, and Howard Lorriman made this arrangement for Brass Band. The Black Dyke Band are playing here, this week's overture, semi Ramedy.
The old ones are the best, aren't they? Dating back to 1823, the Semiramide Overture by Rossini, Howard Lorriman's arrangement, played by the Black Dyke Band at the request of Brian in Nesborough. Brian emailed yorkshirebrass at gmail.com. You can do the same too if you'd like to have a request played on a future programme. You can also join our Facebook group, which is also called Yorkshire Brass, and you can sign in uh, via Twitter. And strangely enough, that's at Yorkshire Brass, just to let you know. First solo of the week, and the choice here is by Colin. Colin's in South Yorkshire in Tankersley. Could you please play me an old euphonium solo? Uh, yeah, this is an old one by Godfrey, in fact. And on this recording, Stephen Singleton is the soloist. The BNFL band are playing, and Richard Evans is conducting. 
the old euphonium solo is called Lucy Long. Thank you. 
Stephen Singleton with the BNFL band playing Godfrey's Lucy Long. It's a lovely old solo, that, isn't it? And Colin in Tankersley requested the piece of music on this week's programme. Next up, we've got a birthday. It's our Joyce in Sandal. Joyce loves your programme, Oily. And um, it really has got her into using the internet. She was OK at it, but she's a whiz now because every week she signs on and she listens to a bit more Yorkshire Brass. What could be finer? We'd like to wish her a very happy birthday from all the family, sent with our love, and uh, she really loves musicals. We wonder if you can find something from a musical maybe in the 1940s or 50s, which she absolutely will associate with. Well, I've done that. This is from 1945. It's the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein and the Redbridge Brass Band are playing. A selection from Carousel. <laughs>
Redbridge Brass Band playing a selection from Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel as we wish Joyce in Sandal a very happy birthday. That music was from 19... 19- 45. Number of emails flying around this week. Uh, the British accent, that's come under under intense scrutiny, I would say. Uh, did you know that it changes approximately every 25 miles? Uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I absolutely get that. Um, where I live in Huddersfield, tomorrow is a word. In Bradford, a morrow. The tea kind of disappears. Um, but I've been watching a, a programme on a and After Dark recently, and it's been set in Hull, at Hull Royal Infirmary. I've got lots of friends in Hull, by the way, and some lovely people over there. And I, but I love their accent. When we would say, oh, no, people in Hull say, oh, no. And if we say we're going to go, they're going to go. And if they're in pain, we would we would say it hurts. They would say it hurts. And then the other way, Diggle, Saddleworth, towards Oldham, we would say there, as in over there. They would say over there. And I cook my dinner in a cooker. They cook it in a cooker. Now, cooker, to be fair... Uh, you go more towards Wigan for that one, Wigan, and down to Stoke, Cooker. Uh, and if you're going on holiday, <laughs> who's going on holiday at the minute? But if, you, if you're making your holiday arrangements, you do a booking. Uh, but over there, it's a booking. Would you like me to book that? Just to let you know. Who's up next? Ah, yes. I'm talking about travelling. Um, this is a great piece of music, actually. And it's for Barry and June. They live in Bradley in Huddersfield. And they cannot wait to get travelling again on their coach tours. They love travelling around the United Kingdom on coach tours. And uh, can you find me any music about doing just that, says Barry. Uh, I'm sure there'll be something. Well, this is kind of. It's the music of Neil Hannon and the Stannington Band are playing. National Express. <laughs>
Stannington Band playing the music of Neil Hannon National Express for Barry and June in Bradley near Huddersfield. They love their coach holidays. Yes, indeed. Get that bass out, Butler. Now then, Pam's Picks. This has gone down well. Our good friend Pam, um, back in the last year, sent me a lovely list with a load of choices on it. And I looked at it and thought, every one of these is an absolute belter. So what I've decided to do is play one every week and call it Pam's Pick. This week, it's one of our slumber pieces of music by Dmitry Shostakovich. And Derek Broadbent made this wonderful arrangement for Brass Band. The Brighouse and Rastrick Band playing Pam's Pick this week. Romance from the Gadfly. That's just a lovely piece of music, isn't it? Romance from the Gadfly, Derek Broadbent's arrangement of Shostakovich, just classic with the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band in charge. More from Pam with Pam's Pick next week. A horn solo coming up now for Lisa, who is in Monk Breton. I'm learning to play the tenor horn at the tender age of 28. And I'm doing okay, but uh, a long way to go. I wonder if you can just show me how it should be done and choose me a horn solo by someone in the know. Well, that's someone in the know on today's programme is Sandy Smith, one of the finest home players of all time. And this is a piece of music by uh, Richard Strauss. The Grimethorpe Colliery Band are accompanying Sandy 
on this recording of Horn Concerto number no. one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lovely stuff. Sandy Smith with the Grimethorpe Colliery Band. Richard Strauss's Horn Concerto Number no. 1, a horn solo, as requested by Lisa in Monk Breton. Stick at it, Flower. You can do no th better thing than playing in a brass band. It's great. And uh, the social aspect isn't bad either. Two test pieces for you this week. Uh, Darren in Maltby in South Yorkshire has chosen the first one. Uh, this takes us back now nine years. Um, to the areas in 2012 and this was a lovely choice for the fourth section. The Black Dyke Band are playing here to show us how it should be done and the music is by Ralph Vaughan Williams. Sit back and enjoy and hum away to the English Folk Song Suite. <laughs> Thank you. 
the English Folk Song Suite by Ralph Vaughan Williams was played by the Black Dyke Band. The area fourth section test piece back in 2012. That was requested by Darren in Maltby. Oldham is our next stop. Chris now lives in Oldham, Scottish by birth. And he says, see you, Hoyle. And see you too, young Chris. Will you be having some haggis on Monday? Oh, you better, Will. Absolutely. I love haggis. I really really love the taste of it and uh, it does it it works for me i know lots of people just don't like the idea of it uh, but it works for me and i'll be having some haggis was first referenced way back in 1430 and uh, there was even uh, a piece of poetry by robbie burns in 1787 called address to a haggis would you believe that in the second part of this week's show by the way i'm going to be talking about pies <laughs> Here we go again. Everybody's going, oh, my goodness. He's on, he's on about pies again. I've got some interesting figures about pies. But before we do that, Chris in Oldham, round to the, uh, to the main reason for your email, a piece of music that you've not heard for a while. Chris says it goes like the clappers are about playing it at the end of one of the sections of the show, especially for me. Well, today's the day we're going to do that. The music is by Guno. Grimethorpe Colliery Band play the finale from Faust. <laughs> David Hoyle, live and larger than life, literally.
now, how about that piece of music? As I was working through my collection of CDs and LPs and all the old recordings, I came across a very old and scratchy recording of that piece. March Prelude is the title. It was written in 1968 by a very young Edward Gregson and played on that recording by the Fairy Band. That is a new CD addition to Oily's collection. I had to go and find a CD with it on. I didn't already have one. Let me tell you something. From going through all of these CDs, and I'm up to number 1012 or 13 at the minute, that piece of music is not recorded enough. It's not on enough CDs. I remember playing that in the, the early 1980s, and I remember the melody and it's something that's stuck with me for a long time. It reminds me in parts of a carry-on film. Here we go again about carry-on films. But some of that, or Doctor, Doctor at the Large, Doctor in the House, that type of thing. Um, just a good, good, solid piece of music. And as I say, a very young Edward Gregson with that recording. So if you're looking for something to start one of your sections of a concert, March Prelude is its title. Next up, we're going to Bolton, to Terry. Lovely to find you on the internet, Oily, at last. And uh, lots of catching up to do with the shows. Yes, this is show number 39 this week. Um, Terry says the wife and I are back in good nick. We've both had similar problems. I'm very tongue-in-cheek. I wonder if you could play the next march by Gordon Langford and have it played by the Black Dyke Mills Band. The title will give you a clue as to the treatment that we've both had. You're cheeky, aren't you? But good on you. The Pacemakers.
The Black Dyke Mills Band playing the great match. The Pacemakers by Gordon Langford. Terry and Bolton requested that for himself and his lovely wife, who've both recently had pacemakers fitted. They're both back in excellent health. That is what we like to hear. Best wishes to you both. Dean in Swindon is up next, a big fan of the Corey Band and particularly of their principal Cornet player, Tom Hutchinson. Dean says, could you please share his fabulous recording of Tico Tico with your listeners? Yes, the music of Zaquina de Abra and an arrangement by John Iveson. Enjoy. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> Yeah, 
yes, some player. Tom Hutchinson with the Corey Band and John Ifeson's arrangement of Tico Tico, as requested by Dean in Swindon. From Swindon, we go to Jarrow in Tyne and Weir. Kevin and Ange have their wedding anniversary this week. Have a fabulous day, both of you. Kevin says, I'll be making Sunday lunch just the once, but I'll have a go. Good man. It's enjoyable. It's therapeutic, you know, and you should try if you want a Yorkshire pudding recipe or to know how to do the roast, as oily as you man. The Yorkshire Imperial Band are playing here and the choice of music that you've come up with, well, this is a bit of a North East anthem arranged by Daryl Barry. The Keel Row. <laughs> Barry's arrangement of the keel row was played by the Yorkshire Imperial Band and Kevin and Ange are celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. Kevin's making Sunday lunch. Talking about food brings me round to the promised list. Yes, the top 10 pies in the UK. Well, my first, first point really on this is says who, and especially when you see some of the names in here, um, who did they ask? to get all these percentages. But anyway, I'm going to share them with you and then we'll have some observations in a bit. And I'm going to do them in reverse order. In 10th place, cheese and onion with 1% of the vote. I like a cheese and onion. Ninth place, now, is this a pie or not? Well, that's up to you to decide. A Cornish pasty. Now, I like a Cornish pasty as well. In 8th place, a pie balm. Now this has got to be one of those Lancashire things where you go in the shop and you buy a pie and you stick it inside what we in Yorkshire call a tea cake, um, a, a bap, a bread cake, call it what you like, but you get your pie and you shove it inside one of those and eat it. 4% of respondents said that. Seventh place, banoffee pie, oh dear. 7%, I hate bananas, I absolutely hate them. I think it goes back to when I was a kid. And if you were ill, you used to get banana-flavoured medicine. It was horrid. 
7% of people like Bonoffi Pie. Sixth place with 9%, the good old pork pie. Yes. Now, it depends where it's come from, of course. Uh, I will not buy a pork pie from a supermarket if you paid me because they're just not right. Pork pies are made by local and traditional butchers. End of. Fifth place with 10% of respondents saying that they like this, an apple pie. Another, another sweet one, yes, an apple pie with 10%. Fourth place, another one of my favourites, chicken and mushroom. Yeah, chicken and mushroom pie. I do like one of those. 13% of respondents tick the box to say yes, they like the chicken and mushroom pie. And uh, third place, cottage pie. Nice, nice. I like a cottage pie as well. 15% of people surveyed agreed that cottage pie was their favourite. And uh, in second place, the bridesmaid, so to speak, steak and potato. Yes, used to be meat and potato, but it's been all poshed up now so that they can add 50p onto the cost and call it a steak and potato pie. 17% of people said steak and potato was their favourite pie. So, dun da 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 fanfare. What is the number one pie? Steak and ale. Oh, yes. 22% of people said steak and ale was their favourite pie. I, I couldn't disagree. I love a steak and ale pie, as long as the gravy inside is really thick. Those are your 10 to 1 in terms of pies. Just two sweet ones in there. The rest are all savoury. Observations from Oily to come very shortly indeed. Next up, we're off to Eastfield near Scarborough. Say hello to Sue. And she would like to hear some music from a 1965 film. 1966 in the UK when we first saw this. And this film was based on a 1957 novel by Boris Pasternak. That, um, that novel is Dr Zhivago. And Pasternak made such a great job of it. And the music wasn't half bad either. Maurice Yar or Yare as some people will call him, made this composition. Derek Broadbent, a terrific arrangement for Brass Band, which the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band are going to play here. Lara's theme from Dr Zhivago. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nice, that, isn't it? Derek Broadbent's arrangement of Lara's theme from the film Dr. Zhivago, the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band doing the honours there for Sue, who is in Eastfield. Next up, we're going uh, down south. Hello, uh, how, how are things up north, Foyle? says Darren. Darren, uh, they're absolutely marvellous. Darren lives in Romsey in Hampshire, uh, and he says, I was wondering if I could ask for a request for my daughter, Abby's eighth birthday on the 23rd of January. She loves the show. She's a regular listener now that we've found you on YouTube. Anything from Harry Potter would be wonderful. Well, try this one from Pennine Brass. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The music, of course, of John Williams. Happy birthday, Abby. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the music of John Williams, played there by Pennine Brass, as we wish Abby in Romsey in Hampshire a very happy eighth birthday. Thanks to Abby's dad, Darren, for the request. Fallowfield in Manchester 
is the next stop, Van James, with this request. Could you please play me the old fairy band recording from the 1970s where Kenneth Dennison was conducting of Gordon Lamkud's arrangement of the Rossini classic La Danza. This is my favourite piece of music, says James, and it'll make my day to hear you announce it, Oily. My pleasure, young man. Here we go. La Danza. <laughs> Another wonderful arrangement from Gordon Langford of a piece of music by Rossini. The Fairy Band were conducted by Kenneth Dennison as they played La Danza. I gave you earlier a list of pies, the top ten, in order of percentage of people who were in a survey who decided which their favourite pie was. Steak and Ale came absolutely at the top of the list. Uh, but some of the things which could have been on there, which I quite like... Shepherd's pie. Well, it was kind of there with cottage pie, but it depends which area of the country has been surveyed. But I, I love a uh, shepherd's pie. Can't beat it. It's right tasty. And from my childhood, I regularly used to eat bilberry pie on a Sunday. My mum used to make a mean bilberry pie. You get some custard over it and then mix it all round so the custard went purple. What about a scotch pie? I don't mind one of those. Don't mind one of those at all. They're a bit peppery, but quite tasty. Uh, and another one that Mum used to make as, as home-baked, we used to call it plate pie because it was baked on a plate, but it was just minced beef and onion, but very tasty. Fish pie. Now, here's an interesting one. I like fish pie, but I prefer white fish. I don't like prawns. don't want prawns in it, and I don't really want salmon in it either. So any white fish in there is fine by me with a nice, maybe a cheese sauce or a, a parsley sauce as well. Uh, not as well, but instead of, and then mashed potato over the top. That'd be nice. Gala pie. Now, this is another one which butchers do occasionally. Definitely at Christmas, lots of butchers do these. And again, I will not buy one of these from a supermarket. They're just not the same. Gala pie is a pork pie meat in a square, like a loaf tin shaped pie but it's got boiled eggs inside it a slice of egg going through each slice of the of the pork really like that lemon meringue pie this is another one from childhood that i remember don't eat it as much now uh, and then what i call cheap pie lots of people will be going how dare you but sometimes you just need a comfort sometimes it's midweek and sometimes you're in a rush 
and every now and again I just have to stick a Frey Bentos pie in the oven. Other pies are available, but just sometimes, and I'm talking two or three times a year, please, not every not every day of the week. Um, and if I have a favourite, it would be the just steak. The, the one that's just got steak and gravy. I love them. I absolutely love them. But you've got to be careful of it. How, how many of these you eat? Someone else who's talking about pies uh, is Keith Brown. Keith's been in touch. He now lives in America. Born in North Wales, but brought up in London. He says, I miss me brass bands very much. I've got a Salvation Army band uh, background. And I'm an ex-member of the Welsh Guards and conductor of Enfield Co-op Brass Band. Programmes like yours really are great for me to listen to in America, says Keith. Thanks so much for all that you do, and I really like your humour. <laughs> Thank you. That's lovely. Um, by the way, says Keith, you can't get a decent sausage here in the States. And as for a pork pie, forget it. Uh, yes, they, they don't know good things when they see it over there. The sausages, well, they're more like the Frankfurter style things, aren't they? And they just don't really do pies. They don't really do fish and chips either. I was in the Epcot Centre a few years ago uh, in Walt Disney World, and there's a, there's a place there which is modelled on Harry Ramsden's fish and chip restaurant. And it was all right. You know, the fish and chips, they were like cod chunks. They weren't like we would call a fish done in proper batter. They were OK, and only just... But if I ever get over, and I know where you live, um, Keith, I'll, I'll bring you pork pie, promise. Uh, any chance you can play um, the Great Overture Othello? Now, we can play it with pleasure. Um, you've put in the email by William Rimmer. As far as I know, Keith, this arrangement of Othello was by William Rimmer's nephew, Drake Rimmer. It may well be that the great William did one, uh, but the version that I've got on a number of recordings of Othello was definitely arranged by Drake Rimmer. This is a heritage recording by the Wingate's Temperance Band. This week's second test piece, Othello. <laughs>
Drake Rimmer's arrangement of the great test piece Nobature Othello. Uh, Drake Rimmer was a big figure in brass banding in the Fife and Scottish banding scene in the 1960s. Just to let you know. Next up, this week's hymn tune. We're going to West Witten, beautiful part of North Yorkshire, to Anne and John. We retired here from West Yorkshire and we're happy with it in the main. It's just the price of the beer in the local pub, says John when it's over a fiver for a pint of bitter. What? Five pounds for a pint of bitter. You pay that in London, not in the north of uh, of England, particularly in North Yorkshire. But if that's what it is, and it keeps you local going, that's how it'll have to be. Your choice of him is an absolute beauty, played by the City of Coventry Band, with a little bit of keyboard help as well. Jeez you joy of man's desiring.
Yeah, remastered from an old LP from the 1970s and recently added into Oily's online collection. Jeez You Joy of Man's Desiring was played by the City of Coventry Band at the request of Anne and John in West Witten. That is just about it for another A Bit More Yorkshire Brass. Show number 40 coming up next week. We're literally going to blow you away this week with the finale which John in Mytham Royd has chosen. It's been a windy week, Oily, and uh, the blowing has been very strong indeed, but not as strong as it is in this particular recording of this cracking piece of music. This arrangement is by Frank Wright, the music by William Walton, and Nick Childs conducts the Black Dyke Band in this week's finale. See you next week. Thanks again for listening. We finish with Crown Imperial. Ta-ra! <laughs>